Good morning, YouTube and Facebook family. Thank you for tuning in today. God has got a powerful word for you this morning. I know that just by you tuning in, you getting up this morning, God is going to reward you for that. Why don't you go ahead and invite friends, share this page, take out your, your Bible and your notebook and begin to write down because I know that the Holy Spirit is going to minister to your heart today. Well, God bless you and we look forward to what God is going to say through this message. Would you please leave us a comment below of how this message is ministering to you and how it speaks to you. So let's go into the sanctuary now and hear what God is saying. Yeah, guys can take your seat. I want to welcome our YouTube audience, our Facebook audience. Thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, subscribing, for just watching us faithfully. Amen. For sowing into our ministry. And I declare right now in the name of Jesus that the same anointing that is flowing in this house is going straight into your living room. Amen. And that, you know, we just, it, it was just awesome. The worship service this morning and it's just confirmation of the chains that are being broken, of the bondages that are being broken, of the mighty things that God is doing with his people. Amen. And with that said, but there's one thing, amen, that we always have to do, church, and we have to stay alert, and we have to stay firm. Come on, somebody, look at your neighbor and tell them, stay alert and stay firm. Don't back off. Don't, don't leave your post, amen. God has called you to do a mighty work for him, and the gates of hell will not prevail. The calling of God that he has upon you, upon your children, and upon the generations to come in Jesus' mighty name, amen. So this message, man, was given to me by, by the Lord last week. A uh, pastor's been preaching a series of grace, right? We've been on the graves gravy train, right? We've been, you know, uh, being, the, being just hearing a lot of this uh, amazing uh, revelation of the grace of God. It's not by works. It's not by performance. It's not how much I can do for you, God, so you can love me more. Simply, he loves you. He paid the price for you. Amen. You are loved because of what Jesus has done on the cross for you. And there's nothing that you can do. Nothing that you can do, amen, amen. That, that will make you uh, say, oh, well, I did this, so God loves me more. No, he loves you just the way you are, amen. He loves you just the way you are. Uh, but, of course, he wants to better you. He wants to take you to the next level, amen. Uh, but, and this is, this is the thing, church, that, you know, last Sunday, uh, of course, we had a lot going on. Uh, you know, services like Easter uh, we call them the Super Bowls for churches, amen. You know, we, we had uh, like 380 people with both services put together. So there's always, there's, amen, come on, give, give Jesus praise. God is doing amazing things. So, you know, we went back home that evening, and um, I'm going to share this story because this is what made me uh, preach the message that I'm going to preach this morning. Uh, we, we went home back that evening, and the enemy sent one of his disciples to my house in the flesh. The enemy is getting bold, church. And the children of God have to rise up and have to take your authority that God has given you to stand against the schemes and the lies that the enemy tries to bring to shut the calling of God in your life. Amen. So he brings uh, this guy, a stranger. We never seen this man. So uh, uh, my son heard this, this noise. He goes outside the house. You know, the very first thing that Cynthia told us when we bought that house is, honey, you have to build a gate around it. That's a wise woman. Amen. She said, she said you have to build a fence around it. We need a, you know, uh, uh, our kids are homeschooled. I have two daughters. I have a son. They were younger. You know, so uh, they were home most of the day. So the, guess what? The very first thing I did was build a gate around it. Amen. And, and in the spirit, it also has a spiritual meaning. Amen. The Bible says that God puts a gate around those. Amen. He puts a fence around us, a fence of fire that will stop the flaming darts of the enemy to come into our home. Amen. So what, why, is, why is the gate important? It keeps intruders out. It keeps intruders out. So this guy was right outside our gate. Junior walks out, and he sees the guy. He's uh, mumbling some stuff, saying some things. 
uh, Junior comes back, wakes up Cynthia and says, Mom, there's this guy outside. I think he's drunk. I don't know. He might be looking for dad. You know, I don't know, right? So anyways, uh, Cynthia goes outside, and this guy is just cursing our home. He's, he's declaring curses that were coming from the enemy over our house. And one of the things that he said, he was talking in Spanish. He said, vine aquí a matar a los niños. I came here to kill the children. When Cynthia heard that, she told Junior, you go and wake up your father right now. That's a wise woman. Amen. <laughs> so in the natural, you know, Junior wakes me up. Dad, dad, there's somebody outside. I think he, they're trying to break in. You know, that's what I heard. So the first thing that I did as a man is, you know, I had to grab my 357 with those, <laughs> with those hollow points. And when Cynthia seen me with the gun, he said, that problem is not going to be solved with what you got. So what I did is that, that's right, that's a wise woman. What I did is I did this. To do what we started to do is that we started to speak against the curses that that man started to say on our house we took our authority that home belongs to us amen that home belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ it doesn't belong to the enemy amen it belongs to Jesus so we took our authority we stayed firm amen and we started to cancel everything that that man was saying and you know uh, of course you know we use wisdom we call the police we didn't know this man's intentions and uh, soon he walked off he disappeared so anyway Cynthia and I started to pray so she goes outside the house I start to pray inside the house that's a wise woman <laughs> So anyways, you know, she goes outside the home. She starts to pray over the yard, you know, and, and, and everything just all around the property. When she goes uh, outside of the gate, see the enemy, he's always trying to find a loophole church. He's always seeking a little, una rendijita, a little gap that he can come into. And that's why it's important for us to be full of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is going to show you those little gaps that you're not going to be able to see in the natural. So she goes outside, she starts to cancel and destroy everything that this man was speaking. And this is the thing, like, how did he know that my daughter drove that vehicle that he was putting curses and saying, I'm here to kill the children. So Cynthia started to destroy that and something started to choke her. Like literally something started to choke her to where, you know, she said, I didn't get afraid. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't scared of what's taking place. It just showed me that I needed to raise my level of prayer. It just showed me of, you know, that this, whatever this guy came to do, you know, it's not going to, it's not going to stay here. It's not going to linger. So she command that devil to go in the name of Jesus. She took her authority. She started to pray over that. And the Lord just showed her, you need to stay up praying for the rest of the night. So anyways, as she was spending time with the Lord, you know, she started to, uh, uh, you know, dive into her word, and she started to see that the, the peak hour for demonic activity takes place from 12 midnight to 3 in the morning. So God told her, I need you to pray till I, till I tell you to stop. She's still praying. Amen. She's a wise woman. She's still praying to this point every single night from 12 to 3 in the morning. You know, why did the Holy Spirit show us this church? See, the enemy is very sneaky. And there could potentially be doors taking place in your house that are open that you don't even know they're open. And that's why the Lord gave me this message to stay alert and to stay firm. Amen. The scripture that, that I, we're going to be camping out of is going to be Matthew 12, 29. Matthew 12, 29. See, church, when, when Nehemiah, when they were building, amen, the gate, when they were restoring, amen, the walls, they were not only working, but they were lock and loaded. They had a sword with them. They knew that when they, if they got too busy, amen, if they got too caught up in the natural and disattended the supernatural things that the enemy was going to catch them slipping. 
Therefore, when they were building, yes, they were doing God's work. But at the same time, there were also people of prayer, people that were watchful, people that were keeping an eye for the enemy. Church, as we are building God's house, we cannot get so caught up in doing all the right things. Oh, we got the right camera. We got the right lights. We got all this right stuff with the right worship. Man, we finally get it down. Man, we remodel this place. Look, if you're not praying, if you're not getting a hold of God, if you're not spending time in your word, amen, you're going to start to do all this thing mechanically and potentially open a door for the enemy to come into your house without you even realizing it so Matthew 12 29 it says or again how can anyone enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions this is very important unless he first ties up the strong man then he can plunder the house let me tell you church that this guy demon possessed oh and this is the thing that when Cynthia, uh, you know, uh, went outside, I forgot to mention this, and she told him, like, hey, what do you want? He completely ignored her, and he started to talk to whatever was there, this demon, right? And he was getting instruction from this demon. He was getting, uh, you know, uh, whatever this demon wanted for him to put on the house. So here, what he was doing, he wanted to bind the strong man's house. He wanted to bind us. And I started to think, if my son wouldn't have heard that noise, if my son wouldn't have been, been the watchman that night, if he wouldn't have gone outside, this man would have came, put whatever curse, and I'm not here to glorify the devil because, you know, he's already defeated, amen? Jesus already destroyed him. But I believe that God showed us that because we need to raise up our standard, amen? So anyways... You know, here this scripture is saying that, uh, that if someone wants to break into your house, that they have to bind you, correct? This man wasn't there to steal my goods. He wasn't there to steal my tools. He wasn't there to steal jewelry. He was there for something else, a different possession. The possession that God has put inside of you. You have gifts, brothers. You have talents. God has blessed you with abilities with abilities to do things. Some of you guys, man, you are very talented. You got gifts to make music, amen. Some of you have gifts, amen, to teach, to preach, to evangelize. There are many gifts that God has placed you. If your gift was not something of value to the enemy, then why does he work overtime to shut you down? Why is the enemy working overtime to stop the calling of God in your life? Why does the enemy always, you know, tries to find a, a, a loop with your children? Come on, somebody. With, with family members. Come on, with this, with that, to try to discourage you because the gift that you have is valuable, church. The talents that you have, they're valuable. And that's what God was showing me. This guy wasn't there to break into my physical house. He wanted to break into my spiritual house. He wanted to break into my spiritual home. So there's, there's a difference between talents and gifts. So a talent is something, amen, that probably you were naturally born with. A lot of times the talent comes from your DNA. Correct? If, if you come from a family, they play sports. They're good at playing sports. You naturally play sports. You know, uh, anyways, that's a natural talent. But a gift. A gift, church, is something that God activates inside of you when you surrender your life over to him. Amen. I'm going to use Pastor Juan as an illustration because we all know Pastor Juan. We all have a relationship with Pastor Juan. So Pastor Juan has a talent to be a natural leader. That's his talent. At the job site, he was a leader. He led people. He, was, he led by example. You know, uh, uh, there was problems that would take place. He will find the solutions. I mean, it just came natural to him to be a leader. He didn't know he was a preacher. He didn't know that God had called him to preach God's word. But when he surrendered his life to Jesus, the gift of God got activated in him. And the talent, come on somebody, let me, I'm taking you somewhere. The talent, what was 
passed down by his genetics and the gift what was given by the Holy Spirit, they made a bond, amen? And he realized that, wait a minute, God is giving me revelation when I read and I need to preach what I'm reading. I need to present it to the church, amen? And what happened that he understood that there was a mission that God had called them to do. You are here today. I am here today. My family is here today because he chose the mission. See, the talent was always there. You know, he was talented. I mean, he even plays some good hoops, man. <laughs> he does. He's talented. But let me tell you something. If he stands before this pulpit, depending on his talent, come on, somebody. If he runs the church, depending on his talent, He's going to miss out. He's going to miss out. The talent, amen, is the, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, the evidence that the Holy Spirit is inside of you. What was happening today, amen, we had talented people playing, you know, the, the, the drums, amen, the, the keys, the, every instrument. There were talented people, but because of the Holy Spirit, it became worship. It became an adoration unto God. You were getting breakthrough. You were getting set free. God was doing something in your life because they went up here full of the Spirit of God. And the gift, amen. That God has placed in every worshiper came alive. Amen. So y'all with me? Okay. So the, the reason that the enemy wants to bind you, wants to bind your house, is because he wants to take the gift and the talent to destroy the mission. He wants to take the gift and the talent that God has given you to destroy the mission. How many people have you seen in your walk with God taken out by the enemy people that were preaching people that were evangelizing people that you will say man i want to man that brother man he's awesome he's full of god and months later he's drinking he's smoking how many times did the enemy took you and took me out when we were serving god when we were in the altar on our face when we were here ushering when we were here serving in the house of god and what happened we let our guard down. The enemy came in. The enemy started to bind. Amen. The strong man. And he came in and took the goods. <clears throat> oh, that sounded the goods. Okay. <laughs> I think that's confirmation. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So this, so this is where I want to take you, church. This is where I want to take you. I want to give you the solution on how to shut the enemy in his tracks. That's, that's really, you know, uh, what, what the Lord was showing me is, let me take a water break, amen? I preached the third service on my, <laughs> preached the first service on my voice is a little, okay. No, I'm speaking something, man, I'm going to preach with power and with authority in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So I'm going to take you to 1 Peter chapter 4, 4, verse 10 and 11. This is why the talent is so important. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. So the gift that God has given you is to be selfish? No. It's to serve others. Isn't it an amazing that we come to a house of God where we're serving one another? Isn't it amazing that people are parking you when you pull in? People are sitting you as you come in. People are taking care of your children so you can come and receive. These messages are getting recorded, I think, even in Russia, correct? People in Russia, I don't know, Russians. They're hearing us. They're hearing us. We have people in the media. You know, we have, the gift that God has given you is to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. So that gift has been given to you by the grace of God. Not to just bury it, not to be afraid of it, not to say, man, serving God is too much. You know what? I'm just comfortable. I'm going to come to church. I'm going to receive. That's okay, maybe for a season. Come on, somebody, but you cannot stay in that comfortable place because if you do, then the enemy is accomplishing the very thing that the scripture is saying. He is binding you. He is binding your goods. Amen. 
So how does the enemy find an entry? By the power of your confession. What are we confessing in our lives? The power of your confession carries enormous, en enormous power. It's a weapon of mass destruction. Your mouth, what you speak, what you declare, it's a weapon of mass destruction destruction this is how powerful your words are your words have the power to heal or your words have the power to wound your words have the power to encourage and build or they have the power to discourage and tear down you have the power to praise or you have the power to disgrace it's up to you what are we speaking you know we have a a, a little tree right and uh, the kids, they, they really got us because they, they, uh, they brought home this gift. And they're like, hey, uh, we got you something that's alive, dad and mom. And we're like, we don't want, we already got three dogs. We don't want no more pets at the house. We're like, what did you buy? No, and they're like, no, it's a surprise. We're bringing it home, but it's alive. <laughs> and we're like, oh, Lord. I said, we're, we're just going to have to return it. You know, we're thinking, I don't know, a cat. I don't know, right? But we're thinking it was like a little animal or something. Anyways, come to find out, it was a beautiful tree. But that beautiful tree was dropping every leaf. This is a tree we have in our house. Y se quedó bien peloncito. I don't want to look at nobody. Okay. Wow. <laughs> no. <laughs> Pastor, that's not what... <laughs> So anyway... <laughs> So anyways, we thought the freeze even had killed it, right? But this is the thing. I started to speak blessings over that little tree. Vas a crecer bien chulo. You're going to grow up. Man, your roots are going to go deep. You're not going to get no plagues. Man, no worm is going to come and destroy you. You're going to be an awesome little tree. Guess what? That little tree started to blossom. Hey, Amen. That little tree started to grow leaves. You know, it's already, it probably grew already a couple of inches. Listen, if my words have the power over a plant, come on, somebody. If my words have, you know, that kind of power over something that, you know, that doesn't speak back, but it's a life, guess what? When the enemy comes in, your words have the power to dismantle him. Your words have the power to shut him in his tracks. Your words have the power to command that devil to leave in the mighty name of Jesus. So why are your words so, so important? And why are your confession, amen, so important? Because that's the way the enemy is going to find a loophole. By what you are confessing. These are some of the things that I will find myself confessing. Man, I'm always struggling. Man, siempre ando batallando con la feria. I'm always struggling with money. Guess what? We were always struggling financially. Man, my marriage, it seems like it's just getting worse and worse. Man, we always argue. Without us knowing, we will always argue. And then when I got deeper on that dope, to be specific, on crack cocaine, and I lost my wife, the enemy said, you're never going to get them back, and you're going to die here like a bum. You're never going to get your children back. You're never going to get your family back. You're never going to get your wife back. You're going to die here, out here. And guess what? That's what I started to believe. I started to believe those lies. I wanted to take my own life. I wanted to commit suicide because I was agreeing to what I was confessing. Church, it is very important the things that come out of your mouth. What are you confessing? Listen, at times, maybe your marriage, man, it was awesome. Y'all guys will get into Bible studies and, you know, y'all guys will praise together. We'll pray before y'all will head out to work. Then what happened? Y'all got busy. Y'all had kids. Amen. Now, you know, you have to work extra hours. Now you're not praying over your children's bedroom. Now you're not praying together. Now you're coming home draining. You're not spending time with God. Those are loopholes that the enemy is saying, I'm going to come in through that loophole. I'm going to come in through that area. Look what the word of God says in Proverbs 12, 18. It says, the word of the reckless pierced like a sword, 
but the tongue of the wise brings healing. This is the thing. See, a lot of times you don't go around just, you know, speaking bad about people. But this is what happens. The words of the reckless pierce like a sword. What you are speaking over yourself is piercing you like a sword. The way you see yourself when you look in the mirror is piercing you as a sword. You know, <laughs> it was funny. Uh, you know, God, we just, we have a good time, right? When, when I just get in his word and he starts to show me things, we start to laugh and, you know, he shows me things, right? So, you know, I imagined, right, you know, because this is what happens. Media, right? Media, uh, TV, Hollywood, they present an image to you that, you know, if you look a certain way, you're going to be happier, right? That's what the commercials say, right? You know, lose weight. This is a magical pill. Man, it's gonna, you're going to lose 50 pounds in a week, right? So what happens? People, you know, that have that deal with identity issues, right? They start to go through extreme things so that, you know, they can apparently feel good about themselves. But look, a pill is not going to take care of what you're still confessing. You need to start to confess, I am a child of God. I am love. I am blessed. And, and this is what God was showing me, right? So imagine somebody, right, that's probably, look at yourself in the mirror, and you're like, man, I'm disgusted with my body. Like, man, I try to lose weight all the time. It just seems can't happen. I can't wear this dress. I can, whatever lies the enemy is putting inside of you, right? Flip it around for the enemy. Next time you stand in the mirror, say, Ira nada más que curvas tan peligrosas tengo. Ooh, I got dangerous curves. Ooh! Hey, honey, how you like those curves? They're dangerous, baby. They're for you. They're for you, honey. What happens? What you start to confess, amen, will make a difference in the way you walk. It will make a difference. You know, yes, there's nothing wrong with staying healthy, with eating right, but that's not your identity. Your identity is found in Christ. Your identity is found in Christ, church. And what you start to confess, you start to beat your own self down with words. You start to beat your own children with those words. Proverbs 18.21 says, The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. This is what the Lord was showing me. What you speak plants a garden. Siembras un jardín. What you speak, you start to plant a garden. And the moment that garden grows up, you're going to go and eat its fruit. So if you're speaking negativity, you're going to go and eat the negativity that you've been speaking. Because the Bible says you're going to eat the fruit of it. The fruit of what? The fruit of life or the fruit of death. When you go to the garden, what are you going to pick? Are you going to pick, you know, things that que, que, que están, <laughs> there's a Spanish word, they said pachiche, right? It sounds funny. So pachiche means something that is shriveled up. It's no good anymore. Dry, exactly, no life. We seen fruit like that, and that's not the fruit that I want to purchase. That's not the fruit that I want to put in my salad. Come on, somebody. That's, the, that's not the salsa I want to make with those tomatoes. I don't want to make a, a, a salsa with those kind of chiles and tomatoes. They're shriveled up. I'm going to go and pick the good ones. Well, here the Bible says that when we speak, that there's life or death that come out of us, and that one day we're going to eat the fruit of it. You have to be careful with the words that you are releasing. Father, I thank you, Lord, that my daughter, Father God, Lord, that she's going to stay pure, Lord. Father, I thank you, Father God, that the enemy, Father God, is not going to come, Father, and bombard her with lies. Or are you saying, siempre es bien necia, siempre hace lo que quiere, nunca va a cambiar. There, she's never going to change. She's so stubborn. She's never going to stop doing this. She's never going to stop going to the clubs. She's never going to. Then you're speaking death over her. But if you start to say, Father, I might not see it, Lord, but I know that you have the power to break that bondage over her, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father, I stand my ground. You know, my daughter belongs to you. What happens? You start to create life over her with your words. 
It is very important, church, that we don't leave no gap at all for the enemy to come. And look, the enemy is getting bolder and bolder and bolder, church. He really is. He's taking people out left and right. I'm not saying that so that, you know, you can be afraid. But guess what? I'm going to raise my standard in the way that I spend time with God, in the way that I pray, in the way that I meditate on his word. If Satan sends somebody to my house to spree cursing, man, that's boldness. So guess what? I'm going to rise up even bolder in the mighty name of Jesus. We have to, church. It's a must. I'm going to share this story with you, and I'm getting ready to close. Amen? Is this pastor, uh, and, and it's awesome because, you know, when, when you're preparing correct, uh, you know, God starts to just like put the whole message together, right? And, and, and it's so beautiful because I wasn't looking, uh, you know, for this pastor. Uh, his name is Eddie Turner. So Eddie Turner grew up in ministry. As a young kid, his father uh, was very involved in ministry. His mother was very involved in ministry. So he was always going to conferences. He was always going to church. He was always going to events. You know, he said, man, I heard some of the most amazing uh, uh, music, amazing worship, preachings, revelation. He was always at church. He said, but one of the things that they didn't teach me is that they didn't disciple me in the word of God. I was always you know, going here, going there. But me personally, I wasn't spending time with God in my own personal time. I wasn't reading God's word. I didn't have a prayer lifestyle. He said that as, and this is the thing, he was okay with it because he was always at church. He was always serving. You know, that's why I'm saying, church, it can be a dangerous place if we do what we do mechanically. It will be a dangerous place for us. So, well, he said that when he reached uh, in his late 20s, that the enemy really started to bombard his mind. He started to have an identity crisis. The enemy started to, you, you know, just to attack him, you know, with in every area that you can possibly think in his life to the point where he started to become uh, like schizophrenic. This is a, a man that grew up in the church. And now he's bombarded by the lies of the enemy. He said that eventually he got so fed up that like never before he cried out to Jesus. And he said, Lord, Father, I know I've, I've been to church all my life, but I need you right now. I need you to show up. I need help. I'm going crazy. And he said that when he opened his eyes that the Lord Jesus appeared to him in the flesh. He said he was so paranoid he thought somebody broke into his house. And little did he realize that it was the, the Lord Jesus Christ that was standing there. And he says, Eddie, what is it that you want me to do, son? He said, Lord, I'm losing my mind. I'm going crazy. Show me what's happening. He said that the Lord took him out of the spirit, man, and, and showed him, a, you know, a, a him, showed him, showed him. And he seen that vapors were coming out from his mind. He said, Eddie, all those lies that you've been believing are nothing but vapors. He said they have no power. They're lies from the enemy. But those vapors that you've been listening to, he said, you have made them a reality. Church, the lies that the enemy bring to us are nothing but vapors. They don't have no power. They don't have no authority. But this is what happens. You make them so real in your life, you start to call them my infirmity, my diabetes, my high blood pressure. My pain, I'm always in pain. I'm always in pain. Guess what? You're always going to be in pain. I got to run and depend on my medicine. When did it become yours? When did that sickness become your sickness? And he realized that he was confessing and thinking the wrong things. The Lord showed him that. But then he, he told him this. He said, that's what you're dealing with in your mind. He said, but I'm going to show you the real issue. He said, look over there, and when he turned, he said in the corner, he seen two devils. He said, that's your real issue. That's what you've been listening to. That demonic activity is what's been tormenting your mind. Church, the reason that sometimes, I'm not saying any one of you here, you might not be able to go to sleep. You toss and turn. You know, uh, uh, 
there's thoughts, perverted thoughts, evil thoughts. There's, it's because there is an enemy, amen, that keeps whispering, that keeps coming against the daughter and the son of God. And this is the thing. If you don't stand up for it, they're going to take over your house. They're going to bind the strong man. You have to stand up in the name of Jesus. You have to take your authority. You have to say, Satan, this house belongs to you. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. And you're not going to share your glory with nobody, Father God. You're going to have to start to confess over your mind, over your situation, over your household, the word of God. If you don't, then the enemy keeps sending those tormenting spirits to lie to you. We dealt with this church. You know, Eddie said um, that <laughs> this was the thing. He said, Jesus... When he showed up, he said, those demons were still there. Jesus disappeared. He said, and then I realized that he wanted me to take authority over them and cast them out. <laughs> Jesus is always with us, church. He lives inside of us. The Holy Spirit, he lives inside of you. But you have to take your authority as a son of God, as a daughter of God over those things that are tormenting you. Over those things that keep robbing you of that peace. We deal with situations in our home. We deal with situations with our family. We know it's not them. We know it's the demonic spirits behind it. But we took in our rightful stand in the name of Jesus. And we're not gonna fall for it, church. I'm not gonna fall for the lies of the enemy I'm not gonna fight for his tricks but how can I do that by me standing in God's Word by me meditating on God's Word Romans 8 37 says this and all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us church you are more than a conqueror because Jesus loves you the price for your freedom has already been paid. The price for your healing has already been paid. The price for your deliverance has already been paid. The price for your children to be set free from the addiction has already been paid. The price for that oppression and depression has already been paid. The price has already been paid for you. Just receive it. Accept it. Stop fighting it. Don't listen to the lies. Don't listen to the vapors. Don't listen to the strategies. Jesus loves you and he's fighting for you he said from I'm either convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons they exist they exist church this is the Word of God neither the present or the future nor any power neither no height nor no depth nothing else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus nothing is gonna be able to separate you you have a gift you have a talent you have a mission and the devil's after it but you should not be afraid you should be bold you should be bold amen you should receive that gift receive that gift that God has given you thank you father thank you Lord hey thank you for watching our video today we want to encourage you today to follow us. Follow us on YouTube or Facebook. If you're on Facebook, like it, share it. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe to the button below so that you wouldn't miss any content that we have coming out. We have some exciting news here at Sydney on a Hill. God is doing amazing things. So we don't want you to miss anything. So if you hit that subscribe button, you will get notified every time we have new content coming out. God bless you. Thank you for watching.